Hey guys, I want to do this video as we are in the midst of new products on the horizon. They're going to be introduced to the market as 410A refrigerant continues to be phased out or phased down, whatever verbiage you want to use. But basically, 410A refrigerant is going to eventually be gone. And in this process, we're going to see equipment with these newer refrigerants, A2L refrigerants, being introduced to the market and right now whether you know it or not behind the scenes there's a little bit of a I would say battle where some brands are going to be going with other refrigerants and of course you got some brands that are going to be going with R32 and I wanted to do this video because there is a website talking about R32 we're a Daikin dealer at Griffin Air Daikin's the biggest in the world and I just really like their products but I do got to say in this whole grand scheme of things this website goes through R32 why you should consider it you might say as a homeowner why does it matter I'll just pick one or the other I think it should matter and I think going through these reasons why you should consider R32 for your home might help with that there is a website that I'm going to put a link to down in the description it's called r32reasons.com and we're going to go through some of those right now reasons why you would want to consider R32 as the refrigerant that you're going to choose in the equipment that you're going to choose for your home so let's dive into this reasons why you would want to go with R32 versus some of these other options. First of all, it is more efficient than 410A refrigerant. R32 systems can be up to 12% more efficient than similar 410A refrigerant systems. The refrigerant itself requires a less capacity in the unit, meaning if you had to have eight pounds of refrigerant with 410A, now you need say six pounds. I mean, I don't know the exact ratios, but I'm just using that as an example. And because of that, they're saying the equipment itself is going to be lighter in weight. And that plays a big role where you install the unit and some of the other challenges, especially as time has gone on with these efficiency standards. I remember being able to buy one and a half or two ton outdoor units. They were small. You could almost put them in the back of your car. And these days, it seems like some of these systems, when you buy them, the higher the sear and capacity, some of them are as tall as I am almost. <laughs> And so seeing that some of these systems are going to be a little lighter in weight, that plays a difference. It's better than 410A for the planet. Most of these newer A2L refrigerants have a lower GWP, but not just lower, significantly lower, a fraction in some cases of 410A refrigerant. The next reason I would say is probably one of the biggest reasons, and that is it's globally accepted. R32 is being used in tons of other countries out there. It's been used for years. Over 160 million R32 units have been safely deployed worldwide. It's non-proprietary unlike some of these other refrigerants where someone is holding the patent. It's all about money for them. R32 is readily available for multiple suppliers. It's going to cost less than 410A. That's more readily available because 410A is going to be phased out. That's going to get even higher and higher. Another thing that jumps out at me about R32 versus some of the other options is it's a pure refrigerant. It's non-blended. And so a lot of folks, when they hear like a three-digit number refrigerant, what they're not realizing is the reason it has such a longer name or requires specific measures when you're adding that refrigerant to a system, such as flipping the tank over, it's because it's a mixed refrigerant. R32 is not mixed. It's a pure refrigerant. In fact, R32 is in the makeup of 410A refrigerant. So you may say, well, I'm not sure I want R32 in my home or system. It's already in there. It's part of 410A. It's also a part of some of these other refrigerants that are being introduced to the market. So it's just more available and it's been around the town, right? Because it's pure and not a mixture, it has no glide. A lot of homeowners probably don't know what that is, but a lot of blended refrigerants do have what's called a glide, a temperature glide, when the refrigerants have different boiling points in that system. Because it's pure, R32 is going to be easier to work with in a lot of cases because of that. One of the big conversations is the patents themselves. Daikin does own the patent to R32 in the United States, but they have granted free access and pledged many R32 equipment patents to increase the pace of R32 innovation. It's designed to draw less electricity. It's also difficult to ignite. A lot of folks that are concerned with these newer refrigerants that are mildly flammable, R32 refrigerant requires approximately 100 times more energy to ignite than propane commonly used in household appliances. Another thing, because it's a pure refrigerant, 
refrigerant. It has zero composition change as time goes on. R32 refrigerant maintains performance efficiency over time. It's easy to reuse and recycle because it's a single component refrigerant. R32 is easier to reuse and recycle compared to alternative non-azeotropic blends. Also because it's pure, it can be charged in the system in liquid and gas forms. That's huge. I remember years ago when we would use R22 a lot, if a system just needed a little bit of refrigerant, you didn't want to add it in liquid. You were going to overcharge that system. So you would see guys just leave the tank upright, give them a little charge. That way you're not overcharging the system. And it was just simply easier to work with. As I said before, it's got a proven history with 160 million units installed worldwide. Since its inception in 2012, R32 systems have become the global standard to replace 410A and many HVAC applications or million new units annually being installed. And that's before it's even being offered in America. So anyway, I don't know if any of this helps. I think in the grand scheme of things, as we see these products continue to be rolled out, Daikin already has the Atmosfera being offered in our country. Certain states already have A2L refrigerants passed as approved refrigerant use. So we're going to see more of these products coming out. And I just think as time goes on, we're going to see one or the other continue to be the winner in a lot of cases. The GWP rating is low enough to meet a lot of the standards that are coming out. And as time goes on, we'll probably see refrigerants replace all of these A2L refrigerants that are being introduced to the market. In the meantime, R32 is going to most likely be the easier one to work with. It's going to be readily available. It's going to be a pure refrigerant. So you're not going to have these mixture issues that we've seen with other refrigerants in the past, including 410A refrigerant. When you compare R22 from the old days to 410A when it first came out, there was a big learning curve there where guys had to learn how to work with a higher pressure refrigerant, but also with a blended refrigerant. And the last thing I'll say is you're gonna see it used a lot of places. With Daikin being the largest in America, you're gonna see R32 systems being offered in almost every market, considering the fact that Daikin also manufactures the Goodman and Amana brands. So is this a sales thing? Am I trying to sell you on R32? I think in the grand scheme of things, homeowners are gonna be worried more about other things than the refrigerant that's actually in the system. But I do think that if you catch this video, this is something you need Need to consider before you make that next purchase. Because of the investment that homeowners have to make when they're purchasing their heating and air systems, worrying about one more thing like which refrigerant is in that system is not fun, but if you know the facts, then maybe you'll be able to make a more educated decision on that. Maybe it will play a role in the decision you make before you spend that money. And finally, let's wrap up with, is this something that you have been concerned about? Have you been keeping an eye on these A2L refrigerants that are being introduced to the market? And does this play a role in in your decision making when you're buying a heating and air system. I'd love to hear about that. Please comment down below. It'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out in the end. We might be having a totally different conversation 10 years from now when it comes to this stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.